In this lesson, we are going to learn about durable functions. The topics we are going to learn within this lesson includes durable function types and different durable function scenarios, including chaining and fan in and fan out. Durable functions is an extension of Azure functions and Azure web jobs that lets you write stateful functions in a serverless environment. The extensions manage state checkpoints and restarts for you. And the extension lets you define stateful workflows in a new type of function called an orchestrator function. So let's look at some of the advantages of orchestrator functions. They define workflows in code, so no JSON schemas or designers are needed. They can call other functions synchronously and asynchronously. Output from called functions can be saved to local variables and they can automatically checkpoint their progress whenever the function awaits. So the local state is never lost if the processes recycles or the virtual machine reboots. Please note that durable functions is an advanced extension for Azure functions that is not appropriate for all applications. The rest of the lesson assumes that you have a strong familiarity with Azure functions concepts and the challenges involved in serverless application development. Let us look into different types of durable functions. There are currently four durable functions types in Azure Functions. Orchestrator, Activity, Entity, and Clients. Let's learn about Orchestrator first. Orchestrator defines function workflows using procedural code, and you can call other durable functions synchronously and asynchronously. The total lifespan of an orchestration instance can be seconds, days, months, or never ending. Now let us look into activity. Activity functions are the functions and tasks that are orchestrated in the process. For example, you might create an orchestrator function to process an order. The task involves checking the inventory, charging the customer, and creating a shipment. Each task would be a separate activity function. And these activities can be executed serially, in parallel, or some combination of both. The third type is called entity. Entity functions are a functions with a special trigger type, which is known as entity trigger. This can be invoked from client functions or from orchestrator functions. And Entities manage a state explicitly. The last type is called client. Client sends the message to the task hub used to trigger orchestration and entity trigger bindings. So what makes a function a client function? This is its use of the durable client output binding. So let us look into a function scenario. The scenario is called chaining. Function chaining refers to the pattern of executing a sequence of functions in a particular order. Often, the output of one function needs to be applied to the input of another function. The second scenario is chaining code. The values f1, f2, f3, and f4 are the names of other functions in the function app. Control flow is implemented by using normal coding constructs, that is, Code executes top-down and can involve existing language control flow semantics and conditions and loops. Error handling logic can be included in try, catch, finally as blocks. The third scenario is fan out and fan in. Fan out fan in refers to the pattern of executing multiple functions in parallel and then waiting for all to finish. Often, some aggregation work is done on result returned from the functions. With normal functions, fanning out can be done by having the function send multiple messages to a queue. However, fanning back is much more challenging. You would have to write code to track when the queue triggered functions end and store function outputs. The durable functions extension handles this pattern with relatively simple code. Let's look at a fan out scenario. The fan out work is distributed to multiple instances of function F2 and the work is tracked by using a dynamic list of tasks. 
The third pattern is all about the problem of coordinating the scale of long running operations with external clients. A common way to implement this pattern is by having a long running action triggered by the HTTP call and then redirecting the client to a status endpoint that they can poll to learn when the operation completes. Because the state is managed by the durable function's runtime, you don't have to implement your own status tracking mechanism. The next scenario is monitoring. The monitor pattern refers to a flexible recurring process in a workflow. For example, polling until certain conditions are met. A regular timer trigger can address a simple scenario, such as a periodic cleanup job, but its interval is static and managing instance lifetimes becomes complex. Durable functions enable flexible recurrence intervals, task lifetime management, and the ability to create multiple monitor processes from a single orchestration. Another scenario is human interaction. Many processes involve some kind of human interaction. The tricky thing about involving humans in an automated process is that People are not always as highly available and responsive as cloud services. Automated processes must allow for this and they often do so by using timeouts and compensation logic. So this completes the lesson on durable functions. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about how to develop solutions that use blob storage. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.